Well, I think I've spotted something exciting here. I think this is a message in a bottle, or it's something rolled up in a bottle. It's a message in a bottle, Fran, but I don't know if we're going to see much of the message. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. It's a beautiful morning again on the River Thames and I'm here today with Fran and you'll recognise Fran I expect from one of my previous videos. And we're hoping to find some little bits of history to share with you. Fran, what are you hoping to find today? I'm hoping to find something very small and unusual. Something small and unusual? Yes. That sounds, um, that sounds like a great thing to find. Yes. Yeah, I'd be happy with something small and unusual too. Maybe a nice coin or a token. Yes, that would be nice. Yeah, but whatever, whatever I find I'll be happy with that. So the tide's on the way out. We've got about another two and a half hours. So we're going to enjoy this beautiful weather, the solitude of being down here and whatever we find. What have you got, Fran? Place I saw it. Ooh. Oh, hey, a button. Oh, now that looks like it could be a military button, doesn't it? Oh, wow, that's brilliant. AFS, that's the uh, fire service, yeah, isn't it? It is, yeah. Oh, look at that. What a fantastic first find. That is brilliant. There's such a lot of history associated with that. And it's in such a good condition yeah. as well. It's beautiful. See. What is it? Is it the Associated Fire Service or the... Oh, no, oh, I can't remember what the A, the A stands for. That is brilliant. Fantastic find, well done. It's the Auxiliary Fire Service, Fran. That's what it is, I've just oh, looked brilliant. it up. And um, yeah, there's so much history associated with that, so that's going to be fun to research. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, good start to the day. A very good start to the day. Oh, what's this down here? A little... That looks like a little seal. Yeah, it is. A little tiny lead seal. Now, I know that Fran knows a bit more probably about lead seals than I do. Look at that. It's, lovely, isn't it? it's got letters on it. C-S-G, I think. Shall I take a look? A little tiny bag seal, yes, isn't it? It is, it's lovely. Really lovely. Just look at all these. Before I continue, I'd like to say a big thank you to My Heritage for making this video possible. My Heritage is the number one family history service where you can build your family tree and discover your origins. As many of you know, I spend a great deal of time researching the family history associated with my Thames mudlarking finds. Take, for example, this small brass luggage tag here, which belonged to a man who was born in the mid 19th century. I found out so much about him and his family that it really brought his story to life. But it occurred to me recently that I know more about the families of clay pipe makers, of padlock manufacturers, than my own family tree. 
For example, recently I wondered, am I related perhaps to the Whites family who manufacture the R. Whites lemonade and the R. Whites bottle stoppers? I find so many of them on the River Thames. And so I've been researching my own family tree through my heritage and within a very short amount of time, I found out all about my great, great, great grandfather, which was hugely exciting. And get this, he was alive when this 1797 cartwheel penny that I found in the River Thames was in circulation. That for me was absolutely mind blowing. Even though I haven't a great deal of information about my family records, with my heritage you have 16 billion records at your fingertips. So this has really helped me to build my family tree and I've even discovered family members and relatives I didn't know I had. But I'll tell you what I really want to show you and that is some of the magical features that you can use to enhance and repair photos and even put colour on them. Okay, so look, I've got a really old photograph here of my grandmother, it could even be my great-grandmother, from years ago in the 19th century. Just look at this here. So first of all, we can actually repair the photograph. Okay, so before you see there, and let's have a look what it's going to be afterwards. So move that across there. Now mm. look at that. But what I really want to see is what they look like in colour. Because I can't really imagine my great grandmother in anything other than black and white. I'm going to press the colourise button. Look at that grumpy little girl there. Oh my. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this. Isn't that magical? Isn't that magical? It's like a portal into the past. I must admit, I'm pretty curious about how this photo can be animated. So look, let's just have a little experiment. So I'm gonna press the animate button. <gasps> oh my. <laughs> oh my goodness. So if any of you out there are interested into looking into your own family history and in trying out some of the other fabulous features that MyHeritage has to offer, then you can have a two week free trial with access to absolutely everything. And then if afterwards you're still interested, you can have 50% off. So I'm going to put the details in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. I am so going to email a copy of this to my mum. She is not going to believe it when she sees this photograph. She's simply not going to believe it. Oh, look, there's another little seal here. I've just realised too that I've uh, forgotten one of my knee pads, so I'm going to be down on one knee for most of the day, but there's another little seal here. And it's also very similar, look. Oh yes, it is, isn't that? Isn't that interesting? It is. So we've got a little hot spot here, and I've also just seen something here which I want to look at. A little piece of metal just there. Looks like it could very possibly be some kind of label. And it is, look. Oh, it is. 1974. Oh. My date of birth. <laughs> Not really. 1974. Really? Yeah, gosh. What else is there down there? All this. Oh, look, actually, Fran, I've just seen another one. <laughs> look here. Oh, yes. See the proof. Look at that. The same. Yes, the same. Isn't that interesting? It is. The seal of approval. Isn't that funny how that there's a whole little batch of them yeah, just here? A little cluster. Yeah. The mystery of the three seals. I'm just looking amongst these rocks here and I've seen what looks like the outline of an old boat hook here. Look, the unmistakable shape. There's what I think is probably a 19th century boat hook. 
Look at this, Fran. <laughs> oh, wow. Would have been an old boat hook at one point. Yes. It's pretty rusty. I'm going to leave it here, but it's an interesting piece of history. Oh, we've got another little button. That's really cute. It's really sweet, isn't it? That looks like a little morning button, it does, doesn't, doesn't it? it? A little Victorian morning button. Yeah. Very nice. Could turn out to be a button day. It could turn out to be a button day. Nothing wrong with a button day. Buttons and seals. Is it button number? Number four. Number four, button number four. Oh, that's really clear, that one, isn't it? It is, yeah. Can you see what it says on there? And have a look at the end. Yeah, that's lovely. And then down here, I can see a little bead here, look. Little oh, green bead. Oh, tiny bead. Teeny weeny bead. It's there. Yeah. Gosh, look at that. The tiniest little green bead. Spotted by Fran's beady eye. That's beautiful, isn't it? Mm, it's gorgeous. We'll have to find a little pin to put it on. Yeah. It's a pipe stem there. <laughs> now here's a nice little patch. And I have just found a bead as well. Not as small as Fran's bead. But here it is, look. Tiny bead. Let's see what else we can find in this little area. Have a little scrape. Well, I can certainly see pins. Oh, there's a coin there, look. Oh, it's a half a coin. Look. Aha! Uh -huh. It is half a French franc. And there is a story about these as to why they were cut in half, which I will tell you about later on. What else have we got here? Lots of pins. Now straight away, look, I have seen another half a coin. It's another half a French franc. Or centime in this case, I think. Oh, look at this. Now this is a tiny fossil. What fossil? I'm not exactly certain, but isn't it beautiful? Look at that. It's so symmetrical. Isn't nature perfect? Ah, you found half a French franc as well. Yes, there is a story about those. They were cut to prevent people from using them. You got there? I found another button. I'm just going to give it Ooh, a wash. Oh, yeah. Another button. It is indeed a button day for Fran. Oh, it probably needs a bit more of a clean, but it's that's, lovely. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Lovely bronze oh, button. Oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Send me a picture of that. And it's got a it shank. Up. I think it may still have its shank on the back. Yes. Nice find. Oh, You're the button girl today. Oh, how pretty. It's got like a floral type design on it, hasn't it? It has. Beautiful. Well done. <laughs> well done, that girl. It's 
So, I've seen something round and gold over there. And I can see from here that it has a skull on it. So, let's go and see what this is. Maybe a pirate's gold coin. Look at that. Yes, there's a treasure chest on the other side. There is a skull and crossbones, or a skull and something. I think we're on the way to finding the pirate's treasure. Oh, what have you got? One of my favorite kinds of finds, actually. <laughs> I can see it there. Oh, an old padlock. A real old weighty padlock. Crikey, look at that. That's going to take a bit of cleaning up. <laughs> Are you going to take it? No. You're not? No. I might take it take as it. a challenge. I just found a couple of really nice padlocks, actually. You never know. This would be a good challenge. I'll put it in my bag. That's a project for you. Yeah. Look at that. What secrets could it unlock? You know, we might get some of the incrustation off just by hitting it on this rock. Look, see? Yeah, I think it's doable. I'll do the rest at home. I don't want to risk breaking it. Let's see if we can transform this into something a little bit legible. There's somebody's old bucket there. Oh, and part of some ammunition. I think oh, that could be a 303, but it might be too small for that. There's so much to look at. It's a bit overwhelming for the eyes. Now that's interesting, just here look, not very far away from that other bullet part. Some more ammunition, I can see a couple of bits. Now that looks like a 303, now what about this one? Well, I think I've spotted something exciting here. I think this is a message in a bottle. Or it's something rolled up in a bottle. Oh, uh, yes, yes it is, look. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's also full of water, but I can see some lettering or some letters there. We might be lucky. We might be lucky. Now it's good that the whoever wrote it put water. I mean, sorry. It's good that whoever wrote it put the message in a glass bottle. We may not find any writing at all because it might have been completely soaked out by the water. We can always hope. It's a message in a bottle, Fran, but I don't know if we're going to see much of the message. Yeah, it might be, it might be completely um, washed out by the water. Okay. Well, we'll save that for later. And talking of bottles, I've just seen a broken bottleneck down here. But what's nice about it is that it still has the glass stopper in. Look. There it is. It hasn't been taken out for well over 100 years, probably. Let's see if I can get it out. And as it's such a beautiful sunny day, we'll have to do the obligatory bottle stopper in the sun 
shot. Where's the sun? Woo! Blinding. There. Look, Nicola, I found your lunch. Oh, thanks, Fran. An onion for me and a lime for you. <laughs> Delicious, delicious. Menu's getting better all the time. It is, isn't it? Now we just need a little bit of fish or, or something from the foreshore. Oh yeah. Some kind of colander or something. Mm. Well, it's not curved though. Well, it? you can wash the onion and the lime. <laughs> <with that. laughs> oh, <please. laughs> Well, the tide is on its way in all too soon, so let's have a quick look at some of the things we found. We found part of the buckle. Oh, very nice. A copy of Georgian buckle. Georgian buckle fragment. Half a franc. <laughs> half a franc. The notorious cut in half franc. Yes. 1950s. What could be a very worn token, I'm not too sure. Take it home and have a look. Yep. Uh, a couple of modern pennies. Ah, oh, excellent. They can go in the Thames charity box. That's right. And then a selection of these, one tiny green sea bead. And oh, then, yeah, the tiny one. And then unfortunately these are broken, but they're still quite nice beads. Mm -hmm. And then part of a, a wooden comb. Part of a wooden comb. Yeah. Do you think that could be part of a, a knit comb? I should think so, yes. Yeah. And then I've got a little selection of buttons. Button bonanza. A little black Victorian button with a bit of pattern on it. And then a, another button with a bit of writing on it. It's probably one of these store buttons. Yeah. Name store it's buttons. Somebody mills. I can see mills on there. Mm. Maybe you can send me a photo of it later. Yeah. T Mills & Co, Aldgate, established 1851, winter and spring 1872-3. We invite early attention to our stock of overcoatings, nips, balty and present cloths, New Denmark naps, lambskins, Irish freezes, beavers, West of England coatings, scotch and other tweeds. Fancy vestings, cashmere, sealskins, astrakhans and all the choicest novelties. Drowserings. West of England hairlines, treble and single mill whipcords, saddle tweeds, angolas and fancy silk mixtures. A large assortment of the most fashionable clothing always in stock in the several departments ready for immediate use. A special department for young gentlemen and juvenile clothing and an extensive variety to select from. College gowns, hats and caps, university suits, highland suits, dress suits, etc. That's T Mills and Co of Aldgate. An experienced young man as good a dress as trousers cutter. Apply to T Mills and Co. One all the city. Auxiliary fire service button. Brilliant. I Somebody think that's one of my favourite finds from today. And then this lovely big sort of brass patinated button. It looks like almost with a floral pattern on it. Could be Georgian, could, could it? Like be. a big dandy button. Yes, or I think so, something like that. And it's got the shank on the back, which is very nice. And then a smaller button with limited amount of pattern. And then I have got this awful fishing weight, which was near. Let's see. Yeah, the... it's still got a hook on it, hasn't yeah. it? And this nylon thread, which is just so lethal for the wildlife. I've seen a swan tangled up in nylon wire. So, yeah, whenever we find anything like that, we pick it up to try and minimise the risk to all the wildlife in the Thames. So that's 
more or less my finds of the morning, which I'm very pleased with. So, a pretty good morning, wasn't it? It's a very good morning, yes. Lovely sunshine. Couldn't be better. And I've got some of my finds over there. My gold pirate coin. Some buttons as well. I'm looking forward to seeing if there's anything on this one. A few cut francs. Some seals, which I will take a closer look at later and take some close-up photos. Here's my pins in the cork. And I did pick up this, which is actually very modern from a piece of scaffolding wood, but I like pieces of metal with lettering on them. I shall use that in some form of um, artwork. I've got the padlock in here. We'll see if I can get anywhere with that. And I have got here the message in a bottle, or will it be a disappointment in a bottle? We will find out about that later on. Well, thanks for coming out with me today, Fran. Well, thanks for having me, inviting me. Well, it's been lovely. It has. It's, it's like being on a tropical beach down here today. It is, very much so. And we are off to get some well-deserved lunch. I'm absolutely starving. I didn't have any breakfast this morning. And Fran, well, You've got an Instagram account, haven't you, generally? I have, yes. <laughs> Even though you're currently locked out of it for some reason. <laughs> it's at franjoy7. At franjoy7. Seven. Okay, brilliant. So, yeah, hop on over and take a look at Fran's Instagram account. She has found some marvellous, marvellous mudlarking finds. Hi everyone, thank you so very much for watching my video. I hope that wherever you are in the world, whatever time of night or day it is, that all is well in your world. And I hope that you enjoyed that foray along the Thames foreshore at low tide with my friend Fran as much as I did. Fran, who was finding vegetables and fruit washing up at her feet, so much so that we almost had enough to make ourselves a delicious salada à la Thames for lunch, but I'm very happy to tell you that we didn't do that. We actually went to the prospect of Whitby, not far from where we were, which um, has a lovely menu with lots of salads in, and hopefully they don't use fruit and vegetables washed up by the Thames, I'm sure they don't. But anyway, I digress. Um, it was a fantastic outing, and as you can see, even if you find a not a lot more than a handful of buttons, you can still extract some fascinating history and and interesting stories and on that note i'd like to say thank you to david nolan for being the voice of t mills outfitters and tailors thank you very much for that david and also to the internet archive for the brilliant black and white footage all about the auxiliary fire service which I think has got to be my favourite find of that outing. So well done, Fran, on that. And now a few words on a couple of the other finds before I tell you all about the message in a bottle. So what's with these clipped French francs? Well, apparently, back in the 1950s, when the French franc was devalued, they were sent to England to be smelted. And originally they were sent in their entirety, they weren't clipped. But apparently some dockers got hold of them on occasions and used them somehow to, um, to go on holiday to France. And so when this ruse was caught onto, the French government started to clip them before they were sent so that nobody could use them. And this story comes to us thanks to Steve Brooker of Mud God fame. Um, he used to do um, oh, what's it called? Mud Men on the TV. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. He, he knows his stuff. He's been mudlarking for absolutely years. He's on Instagram. You can go and find him at Mud God. I think if you put that in, you'll find him. So anyway, it was Steve that has uh, told us this story about these French Franks. Whether it's a myth or not, I don't know, but it sounds quite plausible. What do you think? So that is those. Um, I'll show you quickly the padlock, which I did manage to clean up to a certain extent, but I didn't find a name on there. And I've got to be honest, it's seen better days and it's kind of disintegrating now, but certainly looks more padlock-like 
than it did when Fran pulled it out of the mud. And if you know anything else about any of those other finds, those seals for example, then of course please feel free to comment below and let me know your thoughts about any of the finds that appeared in this video. So now to the message in a bottle which um, was in a glass bottle which is great because it's not that great to, to, to put plastic bottles in the river regardless of whether they've got messages in or not. So well done whoever put it in on that but they didn't put the top on properly unfortunately and so the bottle was full of water and sadly there was no trace of any message on that bottle. But, but, I recently found another one. The beginning of May, I found this message in a bottle, in a plastic bottle, but you know, uh, never mind, uh, it, at least it had a message in it. And I haven't opened it yet because I thought I would save it to open here with you. So I have no idea what it says. I have resisted the temptation to peek in too much, but I can definitely see that there is writing on that paper. And so we are going to see what it says together in a minute. But first of all, I want to tell you about the events that led up to me finding this bottle, because I really feel I have to share it with you. So with the help of some footage, which I took that day, and me talking, because it was terribly, terribly windy that day, so it's awful audio, I'm going to explain what happened. So here's the bottle, we'll get to it in a minute. So it was back at the beginning of May before I went to New York. I went to New York on the 13th of May, I think. And before I went, I bought myself a new camera. I'm gonna show it to you. It's here. It's cool, isn't it? It's um, a bit of an upgrade on my old Sony Handycam. You're probably thinking, wow, why does she use such a big clunky camera? Well, the reason I use it is because um, I can zoom in and I love being able to have that function so that I can zoom in on all the wildlife like this lovely Egyptian goose which I'm now going to put up on the screen. So I got this camera so I wanted to try it out before I went to New York so I went down to the foreshore with this camera just to try it all out to familiarise myself with it and make sure I knew what I was doing so I was just filming around the area a bit like I usually do hoping to find a few little bits and pieces when suddenly right across on the other side of the foreshore I saw this big object sitting on the, the gravel and it looked very much like a suitcase and indeed it was a suitcase and in the suitcase as you will see there were lots and lots of clothes and there were some books Actually, they were flute books on how to play flute or, or flute music. There were bow ties, there were little necklaces, there was also some toothbrushes. And I thought, great, okay, what shall I do? Um, so I tend to use social media a lot. And I thought, I know, I'll take a photograph of it and I'll put it on Twitter. And that way, if anybody has had their bag stolen, then they can get in touch. So I put it on Twitter and it got retweeted loads and loads and loads of times. And I'll, I'll put the tweet up so that you can see it. And then I was in a dilemma, of course, because I was on the foreshore and I thought, well, I can't leave it here for when the tide comes up. Um, I'm going to have to take it because either somebody is going to claim it or I will, of course, tell the police about it. So. <laughs> That wasn't very easy really because it was a huge suitcase with lots and lots of wet stuff in it, completely and utterly sodden. So I stuffed everything in the suitcase, did the zip up and I lugged it up the foreshore onto the Thames path. Meanwhile, also my car parking was running out in a very short amount of time. So I started to trundle along with this very heavy, thank goodness it had wheels, suitcase. And as I was going along, I stopped for a rest and then I looked over the side of the uh, railings. So I'm just wheeling the suitcase along and I've looked over the edge here of the, um, the barrier and I think I can see a message in a bottle down there. What's there? I'm going to have to go down and get it. My parking is going to run out in a minute. So I'm going to have to be quick and I'm lugging along a massive suitcase full of sodden clothes. I knew 
that I wasn't going to have time to run around. You couldn't just hop over. It would have meant running around quite a long way. So I knew I wasn't going to have time. Plus, I thought, I can't leave this massive great suitcase here on the Thames Path. It's going to look so suspicious and get everybody worried. So I thought, OK, fine. I'll dash back to my car. I'll put this soaking wet big suitcase in the back of my poor car. I'll move my car because in Greenwich you can park for two hours, but then you can't put more money in and stay in. You have to move. So I wasn't going to miss that message in a bottle. I wasn't going to leave it there. So I managed to get the suitcase in the back of my car and it was just dripping everywhere. It was a horrible mess. I drove around the corner, reparked my car, put some more money in, and then I went back to examine this bottle. And sure enough, thankfully, it wasn't a big waste of time, there is a message in here. And so I thought to myself, I'll open it in this cafe down the road, but it was so windy that I didn't want to do that. And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to wait for a while. I'm going to wait before I open it. So this, after my extremely long introduction and my story about the strange um, suitcase, which actually I didn't even tell you how it ended, did I? I'll get to that in a minute. Let's do the message in a bottle now, and then I'll finish and tell you what happened to the suitcase. Right, here we go, everyone. Bear in mind, I have not opened this at all. So let's hope I can just get it out. <laughs> let's hope I can get it. I didn't think about that, did I? I did not think about that. I don't really want to rip it. Let me squash it down with my finger. Yeah, here we go. Okay. I will tell you that I can tell that it's a child's writing. I think it's a child. So let's see what this child has to say. Let's hope it's a good message. Let's hope it's nothing awful. Right, here we are, I'm gonna put it up there. Okay, so it's from Brooke, dated 30th of April. I wish for a dog, Brooke, 30th of April. I wish for to have a big room and be rich with a big house, 30th of April. Oh, and that's Casey. Oh, so it's several children and I think they must have all put their wish. So I wish for a dog. I wish for to have a big room and be rich with a big house. Find me a man, bulldog type. Hmm. Tracy, 30th of April. And I wish for West Ham to win the European League. And that's Connor, 30th of April. Oh, so everybody has put their wishes. Unfortunately, they haven't left a contact uh, address or a number, so I can't provide all the things that they have wished for. I could probably help with the dog because I reckon I have some in my Thames Lost Orphans. Let me just get one. I do have a few dogs, so I could... Oh. <laughs> Actually, I have a man as well here. Yeah, I've got a few lost toy dogs, look, and a few more. So I could, I could have maybe made that wish come true for Brooke. Now for, for Tracy, who wants a man, I also have a man. Look, look, I've got a man. He's actually naked, so I'm covering up um, his nether regions here. So I have a man as well for Tracy. I can't do anything about the Europe, Europa League Cup and West Ham. In fact, I'm not really a football person, so I don't even know if West Ham won or not, I'm afraid. And I wish to have a big room and be rich with a big house. Uh, can't do much about that either. Uh, but as we all know, being rich isn't everything. You can be rich in many other things. Um, I might put this on Twitter anyway and see if I can trace them. And then I can at least send them the dog and the man. So there is a message in a bottle to make up for the one which we didn't get to read, which was soaking wet. So then what happened to the uh, suitcase? Well, when I got back to my car, there was a, a significant amount of water in it. And, uh, and it was also beginning to smell a bit because it was quite a hot day. <laughs> Um, so I drove home and by this time I had actually contacted the police and I heard from the police and they said that the police were going to come around and take a look at this suitcase 
and, um, and take it away. So I put it safely outside somewhere and I waited to hear from the police. <clears throat> and the next day I was due to go to New York, so you know the police were going to have to hurry up. And in the end, I, I didn't hear from the police. So I, um, yeah, what can I say? I, I heard from the, the, the control room of the police station who said that the police were going to come, but then nobody actually did come. Um, I finally put the suitcase outside in a shed and that is where it is now. So that is the story of the suitcase on the Thames foreshore and the message in the bottle that I found and that dramatic day which turned into a bit of a performance um, after having only really wanted to just go down there and try out my new camera. So if you're still here after having listened to me drone on and on for the last goodness knows how long, congratulations! And I now wish to share something else with you before I leave. And that is, I want to share some footage with you that I was sent by several people who have participated in the Find Five Objects Challenge. So in a moment, I'm going to play you this footage I have received from um, Sylvia, Lily, and also Timo and Emmy. So these four people have participated in going out and finding five objects to then share with us. So what have you found over the last few days, Lily? A bead, a, a tear pipe, a rattle piece of pottery and another piece of pottery. And what's, what's the picture on it? Let's see. Church. It's a church. It is, yes. Right, hold it really still. Oh yeah. What's the next thing that you found? A rat tooth. You think it's a rat tooth? Wow. And where did we find that? At the lap mate. Let's have a look. Yeah. Got tiny, tiny teeth. You think it's a rat, do you? And a clay pipe. Yeah. We found that at the allotment, didn't we? But it's really thin. It's so thin, I'm not sure if it is and a clay pipe. A bead. Oh right, yes, a bead. And a, pi and a white piece of pottery. Yeah. Where did you find that bead? Where the car is. Yeah, we found it in the gutter, didn't we? Let's see. Could probably use that again, couldn't we? Hi, my name's Sylvia. I'm from Georgia in the USA. Here are my five things. First, I found this buried in some wood chips at my school. And, and then I found this. I think it's from those binders. I found it at my school right next to a tree buried in a little bit of leaves. And then I found this in, in the curb by a crosswalk when I was walking to the pool. Then I found this S hook by the basketball court. S is, S is my initials, S, F. But my favorite thing, I found right in the middle of the sidewalk, a five cents coin from the year 1999 from Cuba. Just right in the middle of the sidewalk. So this is one side. And this is the other side. Ah, this is the other side. I can't believe I found a coin for Cuba in, in Georgia in the USA. Um right just in the middle of the sidewalk. All the the rest of the things are kinda of hidden and a lot of people all would pass. I know, but this coin doesn't look even rusty or old. <laughs> Bye. So we are in Duisburg on the Rhine, a bit before where the Ruhr comes into the Rhine. And I'm here with my two kids. 
This is Timo. Hello. And this is Emmy. And Emmy will tell you what we are doing. Hello, we're mudlarking here, but not really mudlarking, more like stone larking. Until now, we found a few things. Well, I, did. I found until now the top thing of a bomb from the Second World War. Well, no. I find it's pretty cool to find. My brother found. And, uh, I found these metal things. Like this is probably copper or bronze or something. And this is one of these. Uh, I don't know how you call it. But yeah, you turn them on the thing. Like. And I also found some uh, sort of a like. It's like a stone with metal, and I thought it looked cool. And I also found this cross that somebody built together with. Um, some self-made string or twigs or something yeah and since we are downstream from um, the Arch where last year they had a big tragedy where many people died and it's a wine region uh, we're finding also stuff that is for sure from a wine plant um, we're gonna leave this one here and this cross also because many people died last summer in the, the flooding of the Arch region we're gonna throw this back in the run because we think it probably was um, a mourning of people for somebody that died and we for sure don't gonna take this home okay yeah, and my, my... Yeah. so there goes the cross and what did Amy want to say well I want to say my the thing that I would most like to find would be like one of these ink bottles like this old, really like old Like Paige fashion. found in her film, eh? Yeah. yeah. And, and Timo, what do you would like to find? I don't really know. I would like to find something like sort of treasure sort of thing. I, I, I don't know. I don't like really some know. Old. So that's what we did. That's what we found. And now we're going to make something beautiful And we with found it. Um, more than five things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Yeah. No, nine. Yeah. Ten. Like that. Yeah. And my brother found one, two, three, four, five, I six, found seven, more than eight, eight, nine, ten, one. eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen things. Yeah. And my dad found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen things. Yeah. Okay. See you next Thank time. I found ten, twenty. Was really yeah. Say bye. 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 It's a Barbie shoe I found in the middle of the road at the park. And this one I found in the playground at my neighbor at my school in Italy. And it's a wood chip that looks like a rock. This is a letter bead. I really like letter beads because you can make little words out of them on a bracelet. P stands for paradise. This is a Coca-Cola bottle cap. I found it over by the swings in my park. And this one is a hairband. It's made of so thank you very much to Timo, Emmy, Sylvia and Lily for sharing your finds with us. Uh, I really enjoyed your videos. Thank you ever so much. Also, um, I wanted to say a very late hello to Sophie and Eric, who I met back in May. So hi, Sophie and Eric. It was absolutely brilliant to meet you. And I think that's it, everyone. I think that's it. I think um, I've gone on for long enough. Um, I'm looking forward to being back again soon with more exciting adventures. I'm working on a couple of videos at the moment. Another New York one, which will be the next one to come out. And then I hope to share my metal detecting adventures in the beautiful island of Alderney, where I was with Chill Bill and Cy Fines. So I'm really looking forward to working on those. So in the meantime, I'd like to say a big thank you to you all again for watching my videos, for all the support that you give to me, for 
all the Kofi donations as well. I so, so appreciate them. So take care, look after yourselves, be happy, and I'll see you again very soon. Sending you lots of love from here in London. Bye-bye.